anti-replicator weapons, a set of technologies that provide a powerful offensive weapon against replicators, both the block insectoids and human form replicators. Based on technology originally developed by the ancients, Earth and its allies have deployed the weapon in numerous forms in their struggle against a once overwhelming enemy. Anti-replicator weapons use a common form of energy, which disrupts the connection between the blocks that make up replicators and the nanites that compose a human form replicator. By disrupting the Chiron pathways linking each component cell, each individual block or nanite is rendered inert causing the replicator literally to fall to pieces. Prior to the discovery of this technology, the replicators presented a seemingly unstoppable scourge across multiple galaxies. They threatened to wipe out the advanced Asgard civilization, whose energy-based weapons and limited ways of thinking offered little that could stop the replicators in their tracks. Earth weapons and strategies proved somewhat more effective, with chemical-propelled firearms and ammunition that could blast apart replicator blocks with a concussive force. The way forward in the fight came from the ancients. After their repository of knowledge was downloaded into Jack O'Neill's brain, the second time, the colonel was left near death. He was revived by the Asgard Thor, who temporarily connected O'Neill's mind to his ship's computer. It was then that Jack used the Asgard computer to materialize the first replicator disruptor, based on a design from the ancient repository. The weapon was tested against a human form replicator, and later helped to thwart the replicator invasion of the Asgard planet Orilla. This breakthrough provided more than just a single hand weapon, though. Thor adapted the prototype so that his ship could produce the same energy waveform in a massive pulse. This requires vastly more power. But once fully charged, the wave effectively destroyed all remaining replicators on the surface of Orilla. The energy generated by the weapon was subsequently deployed in multiple forms. The Asgard engineered a disruptor satellite for geosynchronous orbit around a planet, providing a line of defense against incoming replicator ships. Earth engineers also developed the ARG, an anti-replicator gun to arm any personnel going up against the technological creatures. This weapon emits a directional energy beam, and a single shot will destroy a target replicator. Here, the energy matrix is configured by a special control crystal inside the weapon. After an offshoot of the human form replicators was discovered in the Pegasus Galaxy, the Atlantis expedition made use of these weapons to retake the city of Atlantis from their control. As with Thor's ship, with a bit of ingenuity, the ARG's effectiveness can also be amplified. When his team infiltrated the replicator homeworld of Asuras, Rodney McKay interfaced the gun's control crystal with a puddle jumper's cloaking generator. This created a field around the ship, which McKay then projected downward into a building, clearing out replicators through nine floors. This deployment of the energy field is highly effective, though also taxing on the ship's energy reserves. After maintaining the field for several minutes, the puddle jumper no longer had enough power to use its cloaking device. Because the anti-replicator technology makes use of a particular form of energy to disrupt Chiron-based technology, in both the Milky Way and the Pegasus galaxy, the replicators were able to overcome this vulnerability. The Asurans simply threw soldier after soldier at the anti-replicator field, gathering data with each impact until they learned to adapt, after which they could simply walk right through the field. This is probably because the replicator's base Chiron pathways do not have to operate with that particular energy signature. Once their own internal bonds are reconfigured, the energy emitted by the weapon is rendered harmless, until it can be correctly remodulated. So too in the Milky Way galaxy, the replicator duplicate of Samantha Carter was permitted to study the weapon at one of Earth's off-world bases. She claimed that fifth, the leader of the replicators, had already found a way to make his forces immune to the weapon. Under the guise of reconfiguring the disruptor so that it would work again, Replicator Carter instead learned how to make herself impervious to its effects, and turned it on Fifth instead. Although time and again the enemy adapted to the anti-replicator weapons, the technology would ultimately be utilized in their final defeat in the Milky Way. With a little help from the Goa'uld system lord Ball, Colonel Carter and her father Jacob reconfigured a massive wave generator to the new frequency to which the replicators were now vulnerable. The generator was left behind by the ancients on the planet Dakara millennia ago, 
and was designed to work on a similar principle, breaking down complex structures into their individual components. With the reconfigured wave translated through the Stargate to every other gate in the galaxy, the enemy fleet was annihilated, with no remnant left to develop a new immunity to the weapon. For more people, places, and things from the Stargate universe, visit StargateOmnipedia.com. If you want to support GateWorld on YouTube, like this video and leave a comment. Check out this playlist for more videos from the Stargate Omnipedia.